Odin returns. Far Cry is about freedom. The battle for a country's freedom against a maniacal king, and the gameplay freedom to do what you want, when you want. The series is known for inviting you to create big stunts and explosions, and in Far Cry 4, they're available in great abundance. Your mother knew exactly what would happen once you showed up here in Girat. The son of Mohan Kale returning to the war-torn land of his birth. <laughs> Ishwani was a smart woman. On this trek, you assume the role of A.J. Gale, a grieving son returning to his mother's homeland, Kirat, bringing her ashes to a final resting place. Before his final stop, A.J. is kidnapped by the king, a sadistic wisecracker named Pagan Min. After escaping into the hands of a group of freedom fighters named the Golden Path, A.J. takes up their cause, raiding outposts, liberating radio towers, and finding other ways to make his dead parents proud. At certain points, the story splits between the two leaders of the Golden Path, Anita and Sabal. Choosing one of their missions cancels out the other and affects certain missions down the road. The right choice was obvious, brother. The story has an interesting setup, but you never see the main characters outside of cutscenes. So no matter how close they get to you or how passionately they plead their cause, it's hard to get attached to the natives. Pagan has a lot of wit and his actions are shocking, but he sits on the sidelines through most of the narrative and isn't someone to necessarily fear. RJ, my boy, are you busy? You don't mind me calling, do you? Fantastic. You really are an excellent listener. What gives the game weight is the intimidating size of the world and the number of varied activities you can engage in. Far Cry 4 is huge. Not only are there a ton of trials to track down, distractions frequently pop up like animals attacking, outposts getting sieged, enemy convoys passing by, and karma events which gradually unlock skills and weapons. Scrambling up bell towers clears areas on the map, and outposts let you fast travel and stock up on gear. The snow-capped peaks can only be reached later in the story, but a few of these let you stretch your wingsuit and navigate the trenches of the Himalayas. Grappling points are provided so you can scale to certain heights, and some darker areas can only be accessed by dropping in from above. If you enjoy other Ubisoft map-revealing open-world campaigns, the proceedings are just as addicting here. Outposts are varied enough to require cautious planning if you're going solo, and you get a flyby of new locations whenever you turn on a radio tower, teasing you to check them out. There's always more combat options available than necessary, whether you want to toss in some bait and scatter your targets with an animal attack, go big with explosives to eliminate bigger targets, or level up takedown skills so no one will ever know you were even there. The local DJ that broadcasts rants against pagan men will get more excited about your exploits as you take over the region, and the royal announcements grow amusingly hostile. Great move, you guys. Yeah, way to pick on the little guys. That sucks, you know? Vehicles are plentiful in Karat, and flying options like gyrocopters and hang gliders are placed in convenient locations. The default driving controls are set to the left analog stick for both steering and accelerating, but you can change it in the options. It's designed to let you shoot from your vehicle as you dodge trees and traffic, and it's mostly successful. Once you learn the layout and capture enough fast travel points, you can get anywhere on the map quickly if you're looking to finish a few races, compete in the arena, or just open some chests. You can also click on auto drive and take the slow but steady route as long as you stay out of danger. I apologize for the Spartan accommodations, but you have been a naughty little shit, haven't you? Gallivanting about with a golden path. The ultimate prize is Pagan Min and three of his generals, each hiding out in a fort that can be weakened by completing campaign missions. These are much bigger than outposts and much easier if you assault them with a second player. Unlike the lackluster four-player side campaign of the previous game, Far Cry 4 lets you team up with a single partner in the main story. The second in command is Herc, who can join AJ at any point on the map. Whoever hosts as AJ moves forward in the campaign, while Herc can grab XP, guns, and loot while contributing to the havoc on screen. Co-op cuts completion time in half. A well-coordinated pair can breeze through the map requirements a lot faster, charging into outposts with elephants or copters, blowing up the countryside, and reviving each other when they're overwhelmed. If it makes the game too easy, you can dial up the difficulty setting. On PlayStation systems, you can also send out a limited number of keys to Karat that friends without the game can use to join you in co-op for two hours in case someone you know needs convincing. If 
you prefer competitive multiplayer, there are three modes that pit the militant members of the Golden Path against the stealthier Rakshasa warriors. Outpost has one side defending an arena while other attacks it, Demon Mask challenges players to retrieve items and return them to their base, and Propaganda involves destroying three broadcasting points before the enemy can stop you. The map editor is back, letting you customize your own battleground or peruse others created by the community. The Rakshasa's stealth abilities can be a little frustrating when on the receiving end, and Versus is not as big of a sell as co-op given the game's structure, but some of the user-created maps are worth checking out. But first... Let's, uh, have a little beast pipe where we hash out the details. You're into this sort of thing, right? Every Far Cry weaves in supernatural demons or drug-induced nightmares, and Far Cry 4 has both. Collecting scrolls your father kept in your old home transports AJ to the realm of Shangri-La to live the life of a fabled hero. The spiritual journeys give you a bow that can slow time, and a tiger that can cloak and attack anyone you target. These chapters are good distractions if you space them out, and the temples you sneak through have some gorgeous views. If you'd like to explore other ways to expand your consciousness, quest givers Reggie and Yogi will inject you with all sorts of weird chemicals and then watch the explosive results. These trips are not nearly as elaborate as the hallucinations from Far Cry 3, but they're just one of the quests you can sign up for. into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation! Far Cry 4 will enchant you with its lush forests, scenic vistas, and hostile wildlife, but it's the mission and combat variety that'll keep you exploring. You're bound to have a few gameplay oddities manifest themselves as Karat is a complex open world with many moving parts, but load times are rather pleasant and the textures and lighting are really impressive. It doesn't take a lot of risks with the Far Cry formula, but once we enlisted, we couldn't rest until the people of Karat were free of tyranny. And all the icons on the map were checked off. Living the dream, come on, punch it in! Boom! 